everyone. Welcome to the Guild Mag Podcast, episode 49. We're rolling up on 49. 50. We are 50. It's approaching. Nice. Are we going to do anything special? Do you know? Maybe. We'll have to see. Mr. Rowan should be back next week with us because he'll be exam free. Yeah, maybe that'll be our special thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, special treat. Yeah, special treat. I don't know. Maybe we'll give away stuff or something. Maybe we should do something special. Yeah. Anyways. But so today, here we are. And uh, we got some new events that came into the game this week. A little teaser action of some story content that we might be previewing. Or, you know, we're going to be doing a little story theory crafting today because why not? That's, um, what, that's what you do when things come out, right? That's it. That's what we do. <laughs> Pretty sure. Yep. So, uh, I am Miko, and we are joined today by Aaron, as you can see. And Aaron, what have you been up to this week, man? I did uh, did another live stream on Friday night. We did Iron Marches. It was pretty fun. We went all through there and cleaned house. I uh, I found something interesting in Iron Marches actually that I don't I didn't personally know about. Uh -huh. You know that Sentinel outfit that came out last week that we were bashing on because of the bird shoulders. Yes. Apparently, Sentinels actually wear that. Like they actually put that outfit on Sentinels in the brand. Now, do you think that that was in before? No, no, it wasn't. Because I would have noticed, like, I noticed, because I was talking to this heart NPC, and I was like, whoa, that outfit is sick. And then I noticed the bird shoulders, <laughs> and I was like, wait, I hate it. <laughs> and then I remembered what the bird shoulders were, and I was like, oh my god, that's the Gemstar outfit. So they actually went to the trouble of uh, putting this outfit on old um, MP Sentinel NPCs. So that outfit actually has some lore context, which is kind of cool. I was impressed by their effort, even if the outfit or, looks terrible because or, of the British or, or a good little marketing ploy. <laughs> yeah. But they've been doing that because, like, the the NPCs in the Heart of Thorns maps are casually remarking to each other, hey, that's a nice-looking armor set you've got there. Yeah, I remember to try and like entice the luminescent people. armor. Yeah. They, they're just like, oh, where'd you get that armor? And I just walked by like, yeah, you look awful. I know. <laughs> Glowy blue thing. But, um... Yeah, I thought that uh, that was interesting that they brought that back with the uh, Heart of Thorns again. So uh, that's interesting that they're now trying to do that with the. Um... Yeah, I just I wasn't sure how many people had noticed that. Yeah, the Sentinels wear that because I hadn't been to the brand since the outfit came out, and so when I hopped in there and I saw someone wearing it, I was like, "That's kind of neat," even if the outfit is not a great choice of fashion. So how do they do the uh, die scheme? Because I know that we were thinking that the die scheme would make or break the outfit. I believe gold and green was what they did. It's did like because it okay? you know how it has a glow to yeah. it. Mm -hmm. The glow the, on the out, on the NPC I saw. I actually have a screenshot here. I'll pull it up. But I remember. I think I remember tweet the armor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need to tweet out that screenshot because it's kind of important to life. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm pretty sure the armor was gold and they had the glow green. But um, oh, documents up here. <laughs> Um, Gilders two screens. What do we got going on? Yeah, this one. So yeah, golden, golden green. Was golden how they had green. It. So it looked better, and it tricked you into thinking it looked good until you yeah, remembered. Yeah, because well, it, it's a good-looking outfit, minus the bird shoulders. Like, if the shoulders weren't avian, I would, I would like it. Yeah. But the helmet's cool. The armor's, you know, the armor's kind of generic, but it's, it's got a glow. That's pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the, the avian shoulders just ruin it for me. They're not even fierce birds. They're like little sparrows. They're like or, or robins or oh, no. something. We they're kinda, not. We're... They're not predatory birds. They're just little. Oh, I'm a bird. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't. Cock I don't like that. Outfit. Well, yeah, that's okay. We ranted <laughs> enough about this last time, so <laughs> we can move on. But yeah, that was an interesting thing I found this week yeah. in Iron Arches. Well, there you go. Uh, um, I have been leveling a thief. Um, I actually, I actually tried out, I think I told you last week that I tried many, out the instruments. How many thieves do you have? Uh, this is my second. Yeah. I have one at 80 that's just kind of sitting there, moldering. Um, and I tried out the Insta-80 trial to figure out what build they gave them. And, um, I like the build, like the actual skills. I'm not sure if I am going to go with the full-on Valkyrie Toughness 22k health pool for a thief, which I thought was pretty good. Yeah. Um. So I like the build so far. So I've been kind of going through personal story steps and boosting up with uh, 
tomes and bits of experience and so we're at 73 so we should hit 80 sometime soon you can actually troll people really hard in like WW and PvP with the tank thief because you won't be able to kill anyone but between your stealthing and your tankiness <laughs> like they won't be able to spike you out in those little windows that you're unstealth right so you can just troll people with a with like a Valkyrie or a or a power toughness vitality thief or something that's pretty it's cool. kind of funny I'll have to uh, I'll have to try try that sometime maybe now that well now that the Alpine borderlands are back yeah you can you can actually enjoy WW again yeah. <laughs> oh man the that fiasco yeah well we'll see how they uh, fix the desert borderlands I started seeing um some posts of people asking for the desert borderlands maps back and I'm like wasn't everyone complaining that these maps needed to go yeah. now they're begging for them to come back it's so funny i the community I think we're just so so fickle yeah i think they'll be back it's just they need serious work <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah so um how about we jump into some gym stall news for this week uh are you trying are you trying to substitute for rowan with that voice there no i don't know what that voice some, was that, gem that voice news. Gem stall news that wasn't even week. properly british that was just troll voice i don't know what that was in the gem store this week. In the week. gem store this week. We've got boxes of fun. <laughs> He's going to kill us. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so, boxes of fun, they have... They've stuffed them with uh, temporary travel toys. Right? Yeah. So I... They'll appear for the first two minutes, I guess. Mm -hmm. So you get um, stuff like broomsticks and magic carpets and stuff out of it. Mm-hmm. And which, is, which is a nice little ploy. They're doing some funny things with in-game stuff and marketing things. I keep... Mm -hmm. I keep... Uh, just being amazed by them. The travel toys now, you can automatically, they will automatically restart once you're out of combat. So you can just be riding your magic carpet and kill a thing, and then it'll just start up again. So you can just keep so moving on your way. As long as you've got that buff from the, uh, from the box of fun, that'll um, deactivate in combat and then restart, essentially. Correct. Yeah. Which I think is kind of interesting as a way to perhaps satisfy people's needs for mounts in this game i mean it's it's nice i think obviously the point of this is like boxes of fun before this patch it absolutely infuriating item to get they're awful they're not fun they're <laughs> a waste of inventory space and you so. double click them when you get them and you leave them there yeah. like in the middle of mount maelstrom or something right mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's what i do with boxes of fun so this actually creates a it, it makes the box of fun something that's not incredibly awful to get. Like you get it and you're like, oh, now I can broomstick ride for a while or whatever. That's not yeah. that's not terrible. Yeah. But just popping a box of fun and getting a metal bar out of it, I'm like, this isn't fun. This is awful. <laughs> so let me shoot. Yeah, up some you normally. I, I yeah, know. normally I just want them out of my inventory, so yeah. I just spawn them on the and leave them there wherever I found them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of do the same. Just I'll probably still do that, but I think this will make them slightly less infuriating to yeah. have. Slightly slightly more attractive to people that you leave them near. <laughs> I was actually really surprised at just how much work went into what they've done with Boxes of Fun this mm -hmm. patch. Like, yeah. they, This is like the Box of Fun patch. <laughs> There's like six or seven changes they made to Boxes of Fun. Like, why would you do this? I know. <laughs> Celebration mode in the boxes of fun now grants both dance and fireworks together instead of separately because you can dance. Oh my god! I mean, shoot off fireworks while you're dancing. Woo! Uh, oh my goodly goodness! And it grants the owner an adjustment tool immediately if the owner is not holding any other bundles. And it doesn't knock you over anymore when it gives it to you, yeah. which is kind of nice because nice. before that sucked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so yeah. Basically, yeah. I think that was just to address the fact that people hated Boxes of Fun. I know. And now they'll only be mildly annoyed with Boxes of Fun. So that's yes. an improvement over hate, utter hatred, yeah. in 80, my opinion. 80 gems in the, uh, in the gem store if you're wanting to have some fun with the Boxes of Fun. I would be willing to bet there will be no improved sales on Boxes of Fun because they're still utterly useless. But um, I think people just will be less mad because you're awarded them a lot in-game. So yeah, I think I people just be less angry with them. I'm, I tend to delete them. So, but I'm always surprised at like that I have them, and I'm just kind of like, where did this? Where did I pick this up? I just spawn them because it's faster than deleting them. Because to delete them, you have to type the name in. Oh yeah. True. Yeah, so I just I just spawn them. I probably just 
I I know that I've got a stack in my in my bank, so I know that at some point I probably just been like, oh, whatever. Here, just stick that there for now. Don't you need like, them for quip? Yeah, you need them for so, I think quip at, or the moot <clears throat> or both. Okay. I know you need them for the moot. Okay. But like, because the the movement items, right? Those don't give you a speed boost, do they? No. Yeah, so the box of fun is still useless then. So I don't see anyone buying it on the gem store. Yeah. I don't know. So, you know. So that, hey. that might have been a lot of work for nothing, but ultimately it might lead to a happier player base and better morale. I don't know if it's a good RP item, box of the fun. <laughs> it might be. I, I, I'm not... Every time I try to say something about the RP community, people come out and be like, well, actually, I'm in the RP community, oh. and that's not how we do things Let, at all. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's move on, then. I like what Nebulizer <laughs> says at this point. We learned that you can never make anyone happy in MMOs. This is true? You can't. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely true. Absolutely. Um, so, we've got yet another Wings Glider combo. The McCallings. Have you seen these? Yeah, they're pretty bad. So I thought the same, right? Because I, I checked them out on the post first, the screenshot, and I was like, oh, those are terrible. Mm -hmm. Rainbow, I don't know, why do I, why do I, why would I want to look like a parrot? And apparently they make sounds as well. And then I previewed them in-game, and I was, they've got some interesting colors going on on, like, the inner part of the wings, and then... I don't know, the colors aren't as brilliantly over the top annoying on the mm. back of the wings. So I was just like, oh, am I going to need these in my lives? No, I resisted. <laughs> How many dye channels does it have? I don't know because I didn't buy them. <laughs> okay, because if it has, because there's all those different color patterns, right? Mm -hmm. So if it had like eight dye channels, I might be down with it. But if it just says two, like all the other gliders, I'm like, well, what? there's like six lines here. What am I supposed to do with that? Uh -huh. So I could see it being a thing if you like wanted to make a rainbow wizard look or something like that. Yeah. Like if, I don't know. I don't know. It's You would have to dye your armor to match it for to make it work. Yeah. Otherwise, it is just awful. I, I could just go back to why do you want to run around like a parrot? Yeah, I don't know. Or a macaw. Maybe, I'm sorry. I don't want to maybe like you offend wanna... any avian fans out there. Yeah, any ornithologist. Yeah, ornithologist. <laughs> so glad that your brain works. <laughs> Maybe you want to. My vocabulary goes. Wait, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> a avian enthusiast. There, there you um, go. <laughs> Maybe you want to. Maybe you want to cosplay Toucan Sam. What? If, I don't know. What if you got those macaw wings and the sentinel outfit? You could be all birdie. Yeah, you could because of the awful shoulders. And then, and then make a character called Birdman, and then you could sail off into. And then the you game. can reenact that entire movie. Mm -hmm. in Guild Wars 2, make it a machinima, and then maybe you'll get a retweet from Guild Wars 2. That'll be your reward <laughs> for all that hard work. You'll get a Guild Wars 2 retweet. There you go. <laughs> Content creation, though. So that's available for 700 gems. God, we're just terrible. Maybe some Reddit upvotes as well. Yeah, that's that that true, up. yeah. Uh, 700 gems for that glider combo. Because uh, you do get a glider skin out of it as well. Because why not? Oh, so it's a back item and a glider. You, Is yeah. that how all of them work? Apparently, that's how they're working now, yes. They're not doing okay. the separate thing. Because, yeah, because originally Glider started at, what, 400 on the um, mm -hmm. gem store, and then they went up to 500. So now, and now we're looking 700, at 700. 700 is, like, the base price now. Okay, so that's, yeah. I mean, that's going to make people angry, but I don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, If you want to sell awful skins for 700 gems, go for it. I don't give a crap. I don't know. <laughs> people are... People are apparently buying it in-game, though. I've seen a couple people walking around with them, which I kind of did a double take when I saw it. I was just like, wait, do they really have what they do? Okay. Yeah, I don't... McCall Wings. 700 gems. Too. So there you go. But they And they also came out with new uh, new dyes. Nine exclusive colors. The Blue Shift Dye Kit. Let me guess. They're barely distinguishable from other blue dyes in the game. So they're actually not that bad. I was surprised. Oh, I'm sure they're great. All the all the dye packs that come up with tend to look pretty good. It's just unless you're unless you're that guy that goes around scrutinizing people's armors, like now what dye is this? Mm -hmm. You're not gonna be able to tell the difference between special black lion blue and blue dye off the starter set, you know? Yeah. So I don't I don't find that dye sets are worth the money most of the well, time. Well, I picked one up just out of curiosity, and I got this one called Resolution, and it's this like. How do I explain this color? It's like this 
royal blue, but it's like a deep color and it's got a bit of a jewel tone behind it. I don't know how to explain this, but it's a dark blue. And it's actually, jewel tone? Yeah. You mean it shimmers a bit? It doesn't shimmer, but it's it's, it's not like iridescent. it's not matte. It's not a matte blue. That's just is kind it of per, boring. Is it pearlescent? No. Or glossy, maybe? Maybe is glossy is a, is a good Yeah, it's glossy. It? Yeah. It's actually, it doesn't look bad. I threw it on my thief because she was the one I was playing on. Um, and it and it looks pretty good on medium armor. There was there there were like two that I didn't care for. The powder blue one, I remember distinctly, I didn't care for. And there was one other that I can't remember. Um, but the rest of them, so they seemed they seemed okay. I was yeah, actually surprised. It, yeah, like those are... They're always good dyes. They always deliver pretty well on dyes. I just don't find that what they end up costing in gems and what they, especially what they end up costing on like the trading post, mm -hmm. is worth the money as opposed to like getting a rare blue dye from the, you know, the original dyes that came with the game. Yeah. You know, very rarely I'll buy a black line dye for a character because I need it. I think the only one I bought was uh, I bought Shadow Abyss dye because I have to buy that on principle. Right. And because you don't, if you don't have the darkest black in the game, you're noob. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I bought Flare, which is like a goldish yellow one, which looked mm -hmm. really good. And that's about it. Yeah. So, um, that's available for 125 gems. And then they went and they've got some, I guess they're putting, putting these on sale for Mother's Day, but they're like repackaged Valentine's Day. You know, you know, somewhere in Guild Wars 2, there is a mom and son that both play the game, or a mom and daughter that both play the game, and they got their mom a box of chocolates. Box of chocolates, in -game bouquet of roses, for Mother's the, Day. or the Wings of Love glider, which has that harp action when, when you open yeah. it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, Some, somewhere in Guild Wars 2, a mom got a Guild Wars 2 um, Mother's Day present. So there you go. You know, yep. show your mom that you love her. Um, and there's also a bunch of uh, minis, various minis that are on sale this week, this weekend. So you can check those out. Um, I know that the glider, the w Wings of Love glider, the box of chocolates, and the bouquet of roses, I think they're only a around until today, quite yeah. possibly. So there you go. Pick those up if you uh, want to show someone that you love them. <laughs> you appreciate that they gave you birth. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the gem store news. Um, but I feel like I'm forgetting something. I feel like something else happened, but maybe I'm just remembering things incorrectly. I believe I believe we've got everything covered. Yeah, yeah Mother's Day, Blue yeah, Dye Kit, the, maybe it was all the Mother's wings, Day stuff. all the boxes of fun in the world. Yeah, I think we're good. All right. <laughs> um, in community news, uh, GW2 Taco Overlay. This is a popular uh, tactical overlay, if you know it. Uh, it came out today with an update. So you can find that on Reddit. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we published a rather controversial article me referencing this. Uh, yes, this is actually this kind of why I brought this up. So, way. yeah, there's there's kind of division in the community, I think, about whether or not Taco violates the terms of service. Um, our 2016 Guild Wars 2 apps and overlay review, uh, which you can go check out on Guild Wars 2. I mean, Guild Wars 2, guildmag.com. It's in our guides section. Um, how do I put this? So what our testers found was that it just, it gives out a lot of information. Now, raiders apparently seem to like it, or some raiders do, because you, if you're trying to pay attention to all of the different visual cues that are coming in during a raid, um, mm -hmm. Taco kind of breaks it down and lets you know what's happening gives you direction indicators it gives you very distinct advantages in my opinion yeah and that's kind of what i mean the testers in guild mag kind of felt that way as well so we gave our honest opinion because we're not going to deny what we feel um and there was a little backlash from the community sorry um but yeah but it got an update it's got world boss timers added in now so if you're a taco user or you've been um considering it check it out um if you're not sure whether or not your account will get flagged for violating terms of service that's kind of you gotta have to play that one it's on your play own. at your own risk um it's also very widespread so it's 
you know, flag rates are low, mm-hmm. but I think some people have gotten, like, at least at the beginning, I think some people got right. in trouble for using it, but now I think you're relatively safe, but don't take my word on that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't come back and say, Aaron said. Yeah, no, I, know, I, I don't, I've never used it in my life. I don't yeah. even have it on my machine, but yeah, it's, I, use just seems very widespread. Yeah. That's the impression that I have as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so that's community news this week. Um, and uh, so let's just jump in. Game news this week uh, is what we're going to be talking about. This patch that came in on Tuesday, which we thought was going to be, you know, update to Alpine Borderlands, bringing those back into World vs. World. And then had some, had a nice, nice little sneaky line just tucked away this, in there. This was a very cheeky update. It was cheeky. Cheeky is a good mm-hmm. word. Yeah. Yeah. But this throwaway line, magic energy has been surging around the ley lines. And that was it. And I remember when I opened it up and saw that, I was like, what are they doing? Um, well, when I saw it, I was like, I was like, is this news? I thought magical energy always <laughs> circulated around the way. <laughs> like, I, like I, I was like, that's literally the whole point of the ley lines, isn't it? Yeah. I don't, I don't know what the, I don't know what the deal is here, but apparently it's more magic than usual. Yeah, so, so um, Bootspur, World of Enders, he put out a cool video on uh, YouTube that showed, he went down to the um, the hub, the Leyline hub in Dry Top, Dry Top and yeah. he'd actually done a video not too long ago where he saw the amount of energy that was surging through in, mm-hmm. like if you look at the ceiling, and now, now it's like beefed up. Yeah, like the strands of pre-patch were very thin and weak, and now there's there's a healthy, healthy. stream of ley line energy yeah. coursing through those those ley lines. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> coursing through Tyria's veins. Um, yes. <laughs> um, so that's just really cool that they would put that in. Um, but we got as well some new dynamic events. Mm-hmm. And if you've been lucky enough to get in and play and come up with, uh, what was it, this r- unidentified rare lodestone that's dropped by various dragon minions, by Ice Brew. Actually, I actually got one in the brand on uh, my live stream on oh, Friday. Oh, fantastic. So you can go turn that in and go talk go talk mm-hmm. to Ella McKay. And even, you, you can double click it and it points you, it brings up your map and it points you to Ella McKay. Cool. So yeah, so they're dropping from um, Destroyers, I believe, Ice Brood, and um, Branded. Branded. Uh, so, so they are, the events are in Snowden, Blaze Ridge Steps, and in Mount Maelstrom maps. You can mm-hmm. go in and fight them, and there's a new, new, uh, achievement category called... Yeah, current, I think there's events. four achievements, four new mm-hmm. achievements for these little, for these little event chains. Yeah. And I think, um, because I haven't gotten to play the events yet, but I'm pretty sure from what I've, um, researched... You go to these locations and you re- learn that dragon minions are flocking towards them due to the la- due to the, the spike lay. in ley line energy because mm-hmm. they like they like magic, right? That makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then you fight like a boss, right? Yeah, and the gameplay footage that I've seen because I haven't been able to play them either, um, it shows that the ley energy is just flowing around and they're actually changing in colors a little bit more yellow that I've been seeing, um, which I found to be interesting. Kind of reminded me of. Like a fire getting hotter or something. I don't know. It reminds me of um, anime, how there's always another power level. <laughs> <laughs> now we're at, guys, now we're at yellow. Things are getting serious. <laughs> we're going to be playing Dragon Ball Z pretty soon. Yes, Living it? World is becoming Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, so I think that... I don't know. What I thought that this was cool... Uh, even though I haven't been able to play them yet, um, I just thought this was a cool way to start teasing out living world content. Yeah, I think it's really three. cool. Yeah, I'm a big I'm a big fan of little stuff like this. It was mm-hmm. it was just so cheeky. Keep keep up with the cheek, Arena Net. Yeah, we like it. Yeah. Um, and um, I what it reminded me of was the teaser content that they had out with season one. Um, now, if you didn't didn't play season one. Because you joined Guild Wars 2 a little after that. Uh, what they did then was they had some... They started off with having refugee events. Like, refugees just started fleeing for their lives. And you had to kind of direct them to whatever central city 
they were closest to. And uh, you, you would pick up, what did you have to, f you had to fix signposts, I remember. That was kind of boring. Yep. Um, Fixing signs. First living world patch ever. Mm -hmm. And uh, you got to talk to some of them, but they were kind of like, we're not, we can't talk about this. We're too traumatized. Yeah. Our homes are gone. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a nice little way of t sh telling you something, something is not, something is afoot. <laughs> In mm -hmm. um, what else? The there was the scavenger hunt. We had to find a, the Order of Whispers agent. I think this was the one that led up to the molten bosses that are now a fractal. Yeah, that was so long ago. I know, but I remember this going on this scavenger hunt to find all of the clues that the Order of Whispers agent had left hidden. Mm -hmm. Um, so you had to go pick that up, and it set the stage for for larger events like the Molten facility. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this is how we started learning about Scarlet's machinations. Well, and I remember um, after Season 2, people, while well, Season 2 was relatively well-received, people were kind of like, hey, can we go back to that whole open-world thing? Mm -hmm. And so now they're kind of like, they've dribbled in these little open-world things, so that's kind of cool. That yeah. they're, it's, not, it's not major, right? But it's... It's a nice little, hey, here's an open world, living world thing that we're giving you. Yeah. So, yeah, especially like especially since season two went into the direction of having more instanced story chapters. Um, I like I like this open world stuff. I'm glad that I know that in season two we had those big vine events that were up in was it Iron Marches? Yeah. It was up in Ascalon. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Iron Marches. Yeah. So. I don't know. I know that I like this way of introducing story content. How does that how does that add to the flavor of the world? Or is this a bad way? I guess no, I think it's I think it's great. Um, I think it's I think these events like this, like they don't take a lot of work um, on the development end. Like they're not a huge deal that way. But they give us um, they let us know that they haven't forgotten about living world. Living world is still going somewhere meaningful, and that they know where it's going. Um, cause that when they tease things like this, that means they have a plan. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that really means a lot to me as a person who's a big fan of, uh, narrative structure and things like that. I know that, um, all these little teasers they'll put out, cause they'll put out more of these. I'm pretty I sure they so. will. Yeah. I would be com I'm confident in that. It means that they're all coming to a head that's already planned out. And, uh, guys, planned out story is always way better. Like, yeah. stuff that's done on the fly is, it's kind of lame. Yeah. So, uh, I, this, uh, just... This just makes me feel like they have a good, well-thought-out narrative plan going into Season 3 of Living World. Mm -hmm. And it also, if we go into the whole Dragon Minion thing, like it, we're going after Dragon Minions specifically because they're drawn to the Ley Line energy. If we take the Ley Line um, spikes as a sort of catalyst for the Season 3 story, that could mean we'll be fighting multiple dragons. Maybe we'll take out the rest of the dragons and get them out of the way. Yeah. Wouldn't that be fantastic? So um, I'm kind of excited that we might be building to that head. Maybe not in Season 3, but next X-Pack or Season 4. Yeah, yeah. Um, the I think the lore community has been pretty pretty having fun with the... Uh, pretty good ha pretty good having fun. Why? why pretty, the, pretty good having pretty, fun that there pretty, with that <laughs> Pretty happy <laughs> then having fun um, uh, speculating, theorycrafting on what, what might be going on with the surges. Because we know that it, this this happened because you know Mordremoth is dead yeah so there's like <clears throat> whoosh so yeah so all of this lay energy ley line with magic is out there in the ley line and Mordremoth died very close to a lot of ley line activity mm -hmm. like like there's a lot of stuff going on in that region ley line wise yeah so all that magic is seeping into Tyria right at the ley line kind of this big conglomerate yeah. it's like guys it's like a ley line city down there it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, there was a cool thread on Reddit a couple a couple of days ago by Synchrony. Um, I think Synchrony is still in chat. But I'm gonna throw this into uh, into chat here. This is a cool little thread that the, the they just went out to town. The lore the lore fiends, the lore aficionados out there. 
Um, the people that think for me so that yeah, I can that, regurgitate what I they know, come up know. with on a podcast. I love I love <laughs> I love that there's people in, people in our community that are just go like and take the nitty little details and start putting this together. But just if you follow the maps that Synchrony put into that thread, um, where are the hubs of ley line activity? You know, the, the deep pools. Um, we are going in three directions because we're going mm-hmm. to Mount Maelstrom, Snowden, and blizzard steps so those dragons are like yeah this is awesome give me that give me that magic yep. um so where are the, where are the deep hub pools over there in those areas uh and because like you said if we're fighting on three fronts holy crap yeah like, what the heck's gonna happen Mm-hmm. and i think um them alluding to this possible three front deal is you know if if the story goes in that direction right it's because we're sick of the dragons and as a community we want them gone so, so uh <laughs> they're kind of hurrying that along they're like let's uh let's move this along we're a little be, bit we're gonna be living in this post-apocalyptic Tyrian world where no magic is left yeah which i i mean i'm i'm cool with we can just uh take out the magic-based professions for a while which and is have like it all, all of be them? Yeah, we could just have it all be uh, just everyone's a warrior now. Everyone's a warrior. It's great. No, it's bad. Fantastic. Every warriors and engineers. That's all that's left. Rangers. <laughs> Rangers shoot bows. Rangers are magic as hell, yo. Get out! Using all those nature spirits. Well, no more, no more frost spirits for rangers. Well, well, get rid of the spirits, but you'll still have your bow weapons. Yeah, yeah. So everybody gets all their magic skills gone. So Ellie's, you're kind of screwed. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But engineer is great. Warrior is great. What I mean, we saw some of this in 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 season two, early season two, where we were being thrown into different directions with the vines going into Kessex and Iron Marches, and people were being split up. Like, wh- what's going on? The world was being split up. Like the different races. We've got these. We've been dealing with this one dragon, and now we've got this second one to deal with in our backyard. Um, I don't know. I mean, you could... I know that your argument is we can just be fighting all of the three dragons at the same time, get rid of them all together. Oh, but we would get wrecked, though, because we, we kind of suck right now. <laughs> we would get wrecked. <laughs> the like, pact we're kind of garbage right the now. The pact is without its marshal, right? <laughs> so the, yeah. the pact commander is what, ostensibly in charge of the entire pact? Ah, but we have a wild card in our back pocket, which is a certain baby dragon that might be uh, coming out of which an got Which got... That's right. Now, my conspiracy theory with that baby dragon was that it got this uh, surge of... Because it took in, uh, sucked in a lot of energy. It took in the major, like, the most significant portion of the fallout from Mm -hmm. Mordremoth. Which was interesting because that that fallout from Mordremoth actually actively actively went after that specific dragon, which was... Because he was along a line. Yeah. Tarir is on a line from that dragon stand hub where Morgan yeah. Moth is supposed to be living. So that dragon has like it's gotta have some sort of like a ley line connection now, right? So but I mean I think what it did was it quickened, because I think that was the phrase that I used this week, um, when I saw that cutscene again. It quickened the egg. So if that egg was just happily developing along <laughs> and it got this quickening effect, that dragon's probably gonna be developing a lot faster now. It quickened it quickened it like a like in Highlander when they cut off someone's head and the quickening happens. I guess so. Was there was there cheesy eighties lightning everywhere? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if that dragon's developing faster, I mean my conspiracy was how do we know it's still gonna be good? Just because it's Glint's baby doesn't doesn't mean it's gonna be good like Glint. Oh you know god, I mean? wouldn't that be the worst if they shoved another dragon to fight in the storyline? They're like, You thought there was four left, but now there's five. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah i i just i don't know i don't i just think that i think this could be a problem i think this could be a problem for the world because it's not just the pack that's kind of i dare say leaderless i don't know i mean the the person the well i think we're player. i think we're head honcho in the pack now. well yeah and we've gotten our character has gotten a little bit more credibility now it's a lot tougher you know, yeah, I mean, we certainly got better dialogue. Get better dialogue, got better respect from the NPCs. You know, yeah, people are we're pretty assertive now. It's kind of yeah. cool. But at the same time, I'm a bit of an adventurer, and I don't really have time to manage an army. So we need to figure this whole leadership situation out exactly. ASAP. 
because I, I don't want to be. In, to I, don't, do. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I know that I don't want to be just you know orchestrating. You know, I can't. I, wanna be a I can't really tell the pact, yo. I'm gonna go farm for my legendary now. So right. Yeah. <laughs> Discuss amongst yourselves before. where we're going next. That would be great. <laughs> so is it gonna? So is the pact? Is the pact gonna even stay together, or are they gonna just splinter back into their orders? Yeah, and maybe uh, maybe us as the player character are gonna have to found something new. I don't know. That would be stupid. I hope the pack stays together. I don't want to go. I don't want to play another storyline that's like, and we have to stand together and unite Tyria. It's like we did that. Let's <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> so could we? How could this work? I mean, if we were gonna, you know, go off on our little adventure way, could we are could we delegate from within yeah, our I, guild? Well, because the because the pack has kind of. Uh, under council beneath Traherne, right? They have that one. They have the one leader from the priory, mm -hmm. and from uh, the one other one, and the one other one. The vigil <laughs> and and the order yeah. of whispers. Yes. Wow! I Come couldn't on. be bothered. I couldn't <laughs> be bothered. And because uh, and you had those characters in Dorn Velasquez and Explorer, what's her face, and. Uh, uh, the other two weren't memorable Efoot. enough to remember their Efoot name. Efoot was the little Asura. Efoot, yeah, that's the one. But yeah, I don't remember the priory Hakja. Explorer she was a Hakja. Norn. She was a Norn. And... She died in personal story, though. I don't know no, who the didn't. new prior. The... Yeah, she did. No, not the the one that sticked with the pack. She didn't die. She didn't? That was a different Norn. Oh, okay. They looked exactly the same. I think they probably but, uh, did. Their, I think their hair color uh, is different. They yeah, so the point the is there's these th there's these three um, leaders that could potentially serve as a kind of a governing council for the pact, meaning that your character doesn't necessarily have to be their leader. I think you'd still be their leader for the purposes of the story, mm -hmm. but obviously you'll still be on mission and stuff, so it'll be... I mean, it's kind of a weird role it's for the of... leader, for a commanding officer to fill out. It's like, no, I'm going to do this. For, for, <laughs> for as much hate as Traherne got, like, it was convenient having him around because... He, he was in charge. He was he, in charge, uh, and he, he could be, like, the dedicated leader of the pact. Yeah, he, he ran the show. Yeah, it was, uh, and it's like, I mean, all right, he he's, off, he's off doing something. I mean, and they were preparing for Krakatoric before all of this Mordremoth action happened. Yeah. Which I've always said is a little dun-dun-dun, you know, conspiracy. Well, Krak see, Krakatoric is... Who's your favorite dragon? Krakatork is my favorite dragon. Yeah. <laughs> but he's a, he's also a tough one for Arena to go to because you got to give us the Crystal Desert if you're going to go Krakatork. Dude. And uh, if you're going to give us the Crystal Desert, you might as well hop on, sprinkle on down to Alona there and uh, mm -hmm. do the whole Alona thing. So the uh, Krakatork is definitely a dubious a dubious matter for them content-wise because they have to open up a lot of content to go the Krakatork route. I mean, why? I mean, if you're going primordial, he lives in the Crystal Desert. Yeah. So what? So you open up the Crystal Desert. Big deal. I know we don't have to go to Alona, but we have to go to the Crystal Desert, and that's uh, like that's awesome. But do they want to do that? Is the question. That's a lot of work. You know what I'm saying? That's it's going to be a lot area, of work no matter what air, what dragon they're going to come into. That like, area is significantly larger than the Heart of Maguma that we got in well, yeah. Heart of Thorns. Yeah. But I think they also, with the backlash from Heart of Thorns, I think it's inevitable the next X pack will be larger in scope. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if they were to let's say they followed the direction of one of the other, like say if they followed Jormag, that would just give us more of the Shiver Peaks. Yeah, which is nice. But it's the last thing any player wants. Nobody cares. Why? <laughs> I like the Shiver. You know I what? I like... hate. I hated the Shiver Peaks in Guild Wars One because the, I found the snow really blinding. But yeah. the Shiver oh, no, Peaks are kind of boring. The Shiver Peaks are great in the Guild Wars Shiver Peaks in Guild Wars 2 are fantastic. Guild Wars 2 Shiver Peaks are great. I just feel like um, Primordus being the first to awaken, he's kind of important. And Krakatoric being awesome, he's kind of important. And Jormag kind of gets the short end of the stick on the Elder Dragon scale. He's got those ice elementals that are just kind of annoying, those ice broods. Yeah. And the ice brood. But I, I, the way I kind of want the story to go, I... Lost your mic. <laughs> Me now. Nope, cannot hear you now. What about now? Now we can hear you. <laughs> Alright, so the direction I want, because I want the story, I always want the story to go crazy, right? Yeah. So I want us to get this new, like, super dragon, and he's super metal, or she, and then we have this giant battle against all three elder dragons at once. We're gonna get our wrecked. With our super dragon at the front. So there's a the super dragon, glint, the glint baby? Yes, yes. 
And so right, now we this have this, <laughs> this awesome battle of Super Dragon against three Elder Dragons, and then we're kind of scampering around doing stuff that makes us feel important, but we're not really important. We're never going to get that big Legolas moment. You know that, right? No, no, we're not. No, I mean, we're not going to be able to be running along the dragon arms and dragging our sword through them. And yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's always going to be get on that ballista over there and fire. I know more airship stuff like with Zaitan or get up inside a tower. the dragon's King mind Kong. and kill and kill monsters. What? So here's another thing that you get you now that you brought up the whole getting into its mind. How we're going to have to find out what these dragons' weaknesses are because. Which time he's on top of. Which time he's on top of with that whole Nova, Rat, Rata Nova, mm -hmm. um, Novus. The, what do you, and they didn't, as far as I can remember, you can correct me, in Heart of Thorns, they, the Rata Novans didn't actually say what the secret, the secrets. Well, the Rata Novans didn't, like when we walk into that room, yeah. the uh, weaknesses the aren't. Weaknesses listed out for us on a blackboard right? right but timey's got some files to dig through you know what i'm saying yeah so uh and she's pretty smart. you know you know we're gonna start season three and she's gonna be like all right i found it and uh that's gonna be how we begin season three i found, I found it but we're gonna have to go down three i think we're gonna i really do think we're gonna have to be fighting three at at once it's or at least it at least you get all excited. <laughs> <laughs> at least to start off. I don't know if it's sustainable though. Because then, well, because if we if we use super super ultra metal dragon right to defeat all three, then we're open to uh, to do a water dragon expansion. So bubbles, because bubbles, yeah. bubbles bubbles for next expansion. That's what I'm saying. Now, did synchrony? You can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but your map didn't show a line going into. Bubbles territory, right, Steve? The, the those are dragon? only, those are, and it's an excellent map. Those are only the lines we're currently aware of, though. Okay. Is, right, like there's, because I'm assuming ley lines go through the whole planet, mm -hmm. and we're only aware of the continent of Tyria, and these, the ley lines, um, synchrony is marked on this map, yep. are the ones that the that are canon in lore as of right now. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming. I don't know if they've said something to the contrary, but I'm assuming there are more ley lines than that. Yeah, there's got to be throughout the Tyrian planet. So I believe, yeah, that the, you know, you've got ley lines going underneath the ocean and stuff like that. In the Cantha, you know, into Alona, all, all over the planet. And we know that there are good dragons out in Cantha. I mean, we know Kunavang is, was, was, we know Kunavang is appeasable. Let's put it that way. Well, She's a bit true. of a wild card. This is true. <laughs> she, but can, if, she can get but a little But if Kunavang crank. met up with Super Baby Metal Dragon Baby Glint, <laughs> uh, or Glint Baby. Um, then she. Then maybe maybe we'll stand a chance. Maybe maybe we could take on the three at once. I don't know. I don't know. Kunavang's kind of small though. You know what I'm saying? Like she's uh, she's smaller than Glint was. She was about she, the same size. Maybe she was but, younger uh, though. Wasn't she she's, younger? She's crazy powerful though. So it's yeah. definitely an ally worth having. Mm -hmm. I just I want the dragons gone. <laughs> Which is why I'm gunning. It's gonna be left, but we're gonna be left with no magic. Mm-hmm. You're gonna and like. And synchrony, ma synchrony makes a good point. There's no direct evidence right now of bubbles involvement. I'm not talking season three. I don't think we're gonna see anything for bubbles in season three. I think if season if um season three ramps up enough, mm -hmm. what if we take out all three dragons in season three? That opens them up for the next expansion to be water dragon related, right? Um, the question is, would they really just throw out three Elder Dragons in one season? I don't think so. I want I want them to, but I don't right. think they're going to do that. Yeah. Like, that's crazy talk. <laughs> they're yeah. going to milk the dragons for all they're worth, and oh. then some. Well, yeah. I mean, my thing is that not just is the pact kind of... Alright, we've got this pact commander, and could probably take charge and delegate things, but it took a lot of effort for the World Alliance to come together. I mean, you remember the World Summit and how dragged out that sorry step was with all of the speeches? <laughs> yeah. So that took some effort to bring those those nations together. And now they've got dragon activity again in their backyard. And they mm -hmm. weren't all that happy to be all coming on, on board. Which is why I think it's not a huge deal that the pact is has taken crippling blows because now, as of that story step, the... Uh, the races of the world and their capitals and their armies are all rallying against the dragons and 
taking this issue head on. But are they going to are they going to unite behind another campaign against another dragon if they're focused locally? That's my question. I don't know. I have yeah. my doubts because I could see the Norn, for example, going Shh, later people, we got to deal with more Jormag crap. Well, and you could have that. You could have the Norn be like, all right, guys, game plan. We're going to take on Jormag, Asuras, and Silvaris. You guys are going to handle Primordis. Humans, you guys aren't really in an Elder Dragon spot, so you just keep doing the Go help thing. the Char. <laughs> yeah. And then the Char, you guys can ha- you guys can handle Krakatoric, right? Because you guys are boss like that. Did I, did I only listed four races. Did I miss one? Probably. No, because no. I listed Sil- Silvaris Silvari and Asuras together. together, together right? They both live in that little area. We're good. Right, yeah, guys, okay, we're, we're good. good. We're good. Yeah. All right, so yeah, I I feel like I feel like they'll probably shunt the humans somewhere. Like you guys can help the Norn. The irony, or... I think, would be of like having the having the humans go and help the Char. What about that, that treaty? That would, yeah, that would be that would they could then have some kind of like infighting stuff because you know that would happen. Char and humans, they don't really trust each other. No, they don't. And then there's um, but the thing with the humans is you got the centaurs that they still got to deal with, right? So uh, what, what are we going to do about that? Are we going to get the centaurs on our side, maybe? And maybe centaurs, the Tengu, because they're still holed up behind their wall. That's true. And yeah, there's a hub right the on their doorstep, so you know that ley line magic's going to be surging into their well, and, areas. And they've been hinting, they've been dropping heavy Tengu hints for a long time, right? Mm-hmm. Like, the Tengu, at some point, either in Season 3 or the next X-Pack, are likely to break out of their shell and be like, all right, guys, we're in this. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like that's something that's going to happen soon. Because they've been dropping hints all over the place, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, as early as, or as recent as uh, just a couple of patch notes ago. Mm-hmm. Was that last week? or the, It wasn't this week, but they released some kind of s- screenshot of a Tengu fighting somebody else. And it's like, Oh, did they? I, yeah. didn't, ch- I didn't catch that. Oh, yeah. It, it's, it's in there. Um, That's pretty awesome. It's up. It's up on GuildWars2.com. If you go through the news post, um, yeah, there's. I forget what the post was even about. I, it might have been for the spring update, as a matter of fact. Maybe that's what it, when it was. But they teased out this, or they showed this screenshot as one of their spring update things, and it had a Tengu in it. And I'm going, what? Why is the mm-hmm. Tengu fighting? Well, and they also had. Um, I think it was like years back now maybe between seasons one and two they had those patch notes those they patched in um increased destroyer activity with the tengu Mm -hmm. and the tengu are getting you know they're bothered by the destroyers now they got the destroyers knocking on their door so they might realize hey we need to get in this fight yeah um so that would be something i'd like to see explored in season three and then maybe taken out into the open in an expansion Right, I mean, Synchrony brings up the point that Colin Johansson said a while back, saying that a new race would be X Pack content. I mean, that's why mm-hmm. we got the new profession. So I could see. Well, and the Tengu coming that. in, like the Tengu coming in the story, doesn't in any way mean that they have to be a playable race. It just means that they're in it in the story. And that's really what I'm like. New race would be great. I'm right. I'm all in on that. But just story wise, I'd love to see the Tengu get involved in that Elder Dragon fight. Yeah, or any kind of fight. Mm-hmm. And I, because do the do the Tengu are they sitting on a ley line hub? They're right by. I mean, their wall that is up against. Yeah, because they're right by the lion's arch, lion's arch one. Yeah, they're right against the lion's arch one. Mm-hmm. So they're gonna have you know, they're gonna have some issues there. Mm-hmm. With um, that's probably why um the destroyers are blocking. Your microphone again. <laughs> Your microphone keeps doing funny things. Well. Is your is that? Did I show you? I showed you guys how the yeah. plug is bent before, right mm-hmm. on the show. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's not in great shape, but I don't have money for a new mic right now. It's just getting a cable. I don't know if you can buy the cables just on their own. Yeah. Wow. Well, anyways, <laughs> we, we we can we can Google that later. <laughs> um, yeah. Mm-mm. Does it matter? Does it matter if they if we don't fight all three at once? Because I. I don't see that being sustainable, right? And even though as much I mean, as we all want it, w- does it matter which dragon we take on next? Um, it doesn't matter hugely. I think pre- if we do continue with the one-at-a-time format, mm-hmm. um, 
it's going to come down to Water Dragon and Primordus. Because Primordus was first to awaken, so it's fitting that he's either the last to be killed or the last to be killed before the mysterious Water Dragon rears its ugly head. Um, so I think Jormag and Kralkatork are going to go before either of them, personally. I think if I had to put money on one we're going to take out next, I, I'm leaning towards Kralkatork. Like, mm-hmm. so much I'm leaning towards Kralkatork. He's just more interesting to the story. He has the most interesting um, expansion area to open up. So if we open up a fight against Krakatork in Living World and then an X-Pack where we kill him. And the Shatterer just got that update. Yeah. And with the Winter pa- Patch. Plus plus Glint being a minion of Krakatork and Glint's Egg now being yeah. involved somehow in the story. Yeah. It's, everything is pointing towards Krakatork right now. Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't mean they have to go that way. Yeah. I like it really... A lot of it depends on how long haul they're going with this story. Um, do they want to drag the dragons out for two, three expansions, four, five expansions? You know, do they want to keep doing the dragon thing that long? Like that's. Yeah. I think. I mean, they're they're I'm, better writers than me, so if anyone can do it, they can. But I'm dubious. It feels dubious. like. I mean, at the end of Eye of the North. We got this whole big, you know, it's the dragons, people. Forget the whole Abaddon did it all. But it's the dragons, people. And yeah. Guild Wars 2 being kind of pushed on that whole dragon thing with the logo and everything. It just feels like Guild Wars 2 is the dragon game. So it <laughs> makes sense that the expansions would be dragon-centric. Well, and we're talking about um, taking on the dragons and defeating the dragons, right? And that's an option. Mm-hmm. Um But there's also the fact that they've been hinting heavily that destroying the dragons isn't the best course for everybody. Right. So I think it more likely that then... I know we've been talking this whole time about killing the dragons, but I think it more likely that we're simply going to see them... We're going to find an alternate solution to the problem that they present to us. The fact that they want to destroy us... um, I think we're going to end up having to find some sort of alternate solution to that. I don't know what that would be. That's, you know, I don't, I have no idea, but yeah. it's going to have be something involving the greater picture. You know, it's going to be right. something involving what the Asura refer to as the eternal alchemy, mm-hmm. which is essentially the, you know, the state of the universe. Right. And I just think there's a bigger picture that they've been hint- dropping hints at, especially in season two, less so in Heart of Thorns, mm-hmm. that, um, has yet to come into play, but that I think we're hinting steadily towards. Because you notice how in season two we kept going back to the Priory. Yes. We kept doing research to the Priory. The Priory is a huge facet. Yeah. Even Ritlock went to the Priory. Yeah, and with yeah. Ritlock having gone to God knows where and come back with super magics. Right. Um, you know that's a whole another thing we have to explore. Yeah. So, I just think we're going to go back to the Priory. We're going to do some research. We're going to be like, Yo, dog, we shouldn't be killing these guys. They're. Uh, they're a necessary evil or some crap like right. that. Find a know. way to find a way to convince their minions to switch sides on them. Or f- like find a did. way to s- find a way to sate their hunger without destroying them, or find a way to effectively destroy the planet while saving everybody, which is where the Mursat could come into the story and tie the raids in because the Mursat are capable of that. Destroy the I'd- planet and save everyone. How? Where? Would we go out to the moon? I mean, come on. <laughs> the the Mersac can dimension travel, man. It's real. Oh, it's real. God. These things that I don't remember out of dimension. anymore. It's insane. So, yeah, the the thread there the threads are there, right? Mm-hmm. And they can tie whichever ones together they please. Yeah. It just depends on how they tie them together. Yeah. Yeah. There's so, and there's so many threads now, it's impossible. Like, it's impossible to keep track of all of it. Mm-hmm. Even the super lore nerds, like, you see these posts on Reddit and this thread... They're like they're like thousands of words long because keeping track of all this stuff. It's is hard insane. work. It's hard work. Yeah, it's I insane. give them a lot of props. They they put the effort into it. Um, I think one of the things like you you mentioned about not going in the direction of bubbles all that quickly, or because that would kind of open up. Well, are we going to go underwater to fight this dragon or do something with this dragon? Meet up with this dragon? Um, it's going to have to be a water fight. But I mean, me- they keep going away from aquatic content like Synchrony brings up in chat they're they're they gotta they're do not, something about it they keep they moving right. I mean, the revenant has it. like one weapon not that many skills a couple of legends you know are underwater and the rest of them are kind of not 
Well, what I'm thinking is, um, if we focus on these three dragons that are on land right now, um, they could be saving the water dragon for maybe two, three expansions down the road that may or may not include Cantha. We'll not go there. But, you know, they could be saving a full underwater overhaul for that expansion, which would mean, yes, ex right now there is no work happening on underwater combat. It means they're telling the absolute truth when they say, no, we're not focusing on underwater at all right now. But they, you know, these companies, they plan their game development, you know, so far mm -hmm. out. I could see them planning to do an underwater overhaul when that content is starts to develop. I think if we ever go in the direction of bubbles, we're going to go Cantha again. Yeah, I, because... I think it would be highly likely to go Cantha and find that they've been fighting bubbles this whole time. And that's right. what they've been struggling with. And the whole idea to... I don't know. This just idea popped into my head of bringing the cir bringing the circle to conclusion. I think is where I want to coming to full like, circle. Coming in full circle. Thank you for that cliche term that I couldn't think of. Um, but it's it's the idea that we started off with factions as our first expansion, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then if we were to end there. What would that mean? What would that mean for tier? I don't know. I have no idea. This just a crazy idea just popped into my head. <laughs> like more well, I mean, bubbles is the ocean synchrony says that's true i that's i really crazy. like that for i really like that concept for Mordramoth because well i i love it and i hate it because i hate the whole thing that's like oh the elder dragons are all masters of two facets of you know something <laughs> and Mordramoth is like plants and mind it's like it's a weird combination right. but whatever we'll, we'll run with it i didn't i didn't like that bit of lore at all i thought it was stupid but um the fact that they worked that into Mordramoth being the jungle instead of being an entity of the jungle was cool. Um, but since we have these other dragons that are physical dragons, I don't know if they want to pull that move twice. I don't know. I mean, I think they're kind of... Like with Jormag, I think they're going to have to. Because Jormag, but, it affects the weather. Well, we've seen Jormag, though. Jormag is a physical entity. They have his tooth in uh, Holbrack. That I mean, they, they knocked his tooth right out. Yeah. It's my favorite character in the whole franchise, by the way. The dude that knocked out Jormag's tooth. What wasn't a badass. That, uh, yeah. No, I don't remember. I always forget his name. I, I always forget his name. Yeah. It wasn't Air's father. It was. I want to say it's else. like it? um, Angir Toothrender or some crap like that. Some, some good old... Dragon Rend. No, his last name is Dragon Rend. Um, and I want to say his first name is Angir. But I You're going to Google sure. that up in the wiki. Okay, I'm going to wiki it and I'm going to crucify my own terrible lore knowledge. All right. So I don't know. I'm I am I don't know. I like it, speculating on where they might be going with this. Um, Asgir, 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 Ace, Dragon Render, Asgir, Dragon Render. Okay, there we go. It's A E S, right? G I R. Uh, A S G E I R. Asgir. Okay, that's weird. All right, I'm very norny. Um, yeah, I'm I'm I just like this teaser content. I want more. If yeah, they draw, yeah. if they were to, because they didn't, they were like, "Well, I, season three is not coming till you know quarter three, you know, quarter three, and we were all going lamenting. What are you going to be doing to keep us entertained? If they keep dropping teasers like this till we get season three and quarter three, I'm happy. And like, I don't think we'll get a teaser every two weeks, right? But we might get a teaser, a cheeky little teaser, like once a month, maybe. Yeah, um, I could be happy. Maybe even once every two months. Something. I mean, it's May already, though, so I guess we've only got, like, three or four months to right. go, maybe five. Because if we're talking, what, July, June is what we said? I was thinking August, personally. Okay. Because then they could come in... June, June, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think, so I think we, August. we got a couple of months left, basically. A couple, mm -hmm. or three. Two or three months. Actually, maybe even September, because they might want to wait till after the uh, fourth anniversary. I don't want to. Please don't. Please don't make me wait till September for her. I don't want to. I don't think... <laughs> Unless they want to tie the Queen's Jubilee into Living World again, then they could have it like be during. What we'll have another Scarlet attack during the Jubilee because that's oh, done already. It's like season three, Scarlet's back, <laughs> <laughs> and she's been Queen Jenna all along. What? Oh <laughs> my God! People would be so angry. I know, but, but I... yeah, I I like the teaser content. I think we just we tangent rambled for like a half hour and didn't make yeah. any points whatsoever. I know, but. <laughs> I think the idea is is that there's possibilities and uh, yeah. and I don't know. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued yeah, by this these... idea of this three front 
that where the splitting that's happening at the moment because yeah. there's only three dragons. Three dragons. Yeah, they left. have they have so okay. many threads they've drawn out and so many of them can be tied together in various ways. And so they have all these options that they can go story wise, and that's why it's so hard to predict what's going to happen because they've actually crafted a really um a really good mysterious narrative here that we mm -hmm. still can't really put our fingers on what's yeah. gonna happen in it. Yeah. I, I'm I'm intrigued. Um, I think I think we've ex exhausted our story crafting, theory crafting. I mean, we talked about I think pretty much everything ever. Yeah, I don't know. Any somehow we tied. The, somehow I tied the Mersat to these. To these I wasn't events. expecting that, but you know, you brought it in. <laughs> you always bring somehow, something. Somehow we managed that. Yeah. Um. Okay. I think we're good. Uh. I we had, had do we want to talk about jumping puzzles? No, we can t we can save that rent for next time. <laughs> I here, my uh, I'm just gonna say you show know what? Show notes shenanigans. Show notes show, no, show no, I'm gonna tell you something in my in my playing my little thief this week. Uh, you know how these daily jumping puzzles are now in, and uh, I, I like I like this idea because I hate jumping for many reasons because I'm not good at it, but um. Gliding is in Quartiria now, and the glider interferes. I'm telling you, shut that thing off. <laughs> Wait, why does it interfere with Sometimes if you hold your space bar down too long, your glider pops open. Mid but gliders are supposed to be disabled in jumping puzzles. Yeah, well, they're not. <laughs> well, that's they, kind of... They disable them, like, when you get supposedly close to the end. But I close to the end, I have found, is after you get to the top in the chest. And then when you try to jump off of wherever you need to be, or where you've gotten to... You can't glide and you die. <laughs> that seems dumb. The whole JP should just be a no-fly zone. That's what I say. Turn them off. Anyways, that was my little rant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just I just don't do jumping puzzles, even if they're dailies. I don't care. I'm not going right. to do that crap. I'm in I paid for an MMO, not a platformer. I'm, I, I, I've been chasing achievement. I'm getting close to my 10,500 chest. So oh, I'm okay. kind of like, all right, I want some more APs. Let's, let's get some daily APs and the jumping puzzle one, because I'm missing a ton of them. Um, all right, I think I think that's all I have to say on that my little mini rant. Um, just had to get, just had to I just get had to get it out because it was just it was stifling me. Um, <laughs> um, so Guildmag, we released this week a little guide, a uh, thirteen-minute video to Herta, which is a bloodstone dust eater. If you would like to, as we were talking about lore, this is a cool little segue. As we're talking about lore, <laughs> uh, if you would like to know more, go on this little scavenger hunt to get yourself Herta and get rid of some of your bloodstone dust if you're not already sinking it into um, your guild hall. <laughs> uh, yeah, nobody likes bloodstone dust. I mean, it's a little better now, but it's still pretty terrible. Yeah. So, um, if you want, even if you don't need Herta, you'll have a little gadget and you get some cool lore out of it. You get to find out about the Exalted and their connection with Glint a little bit more. So, it's a cool little, cool little scavenger hunt and you can check that out on guildmag.com. Um, so I think that's going to wrap us up for this week. What do you think? Yeah. I think, good? uh, it's pretty good? much covered everything. We're doing good. All right. We, uh, we talked about all the things. All the things. So n yeah. we will be back on uh, next Sunday at uh, 1 p.m. GMT. No, not GMT. Pacific time. <laughs> 8 yeah. p.m. GMT. There you go. And 9, 9 p.m. British Standard Time. Right here at twitch.tv slash guildmag. Episode 50. Episode 50. We'll do something. We'll do something fun and crazy, hopefully. Because I think it warrants it. 50 is Maybe we'll make landmark. Sandra eat something funky on camera. Oh, why would we do that? Let's make Rowan do something funny. That's true, actually. He's he always the one. He does the, yeah. the really funny things on camera. Yeah, we'll make him drink. And he like, hasn't done one in a while, so I think it's time for him to do something. Make him drink, like, whiskey shots with mustard in them or something. <laughs> that's kind of gross. Yeah, that's the point. That's going to be good. All right. We'll see. Anyways. So we'll see you guys next Sunday right here on twitch.tv slash guildmag. Thank you for joining us in chat, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. See you guys.